Praise the Lord this wonderful, cool morning, saints. Rainy. Hallelujah. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And, you know, we are on the pilgrim walk. We are aliens in this in this world. We hear a lot of talk about aliens coming. We're the aliens, saints. We are the pilgrims in this world that lieth in wickedness. The whole world's covered in darkness. And it's, you know, when, and I'm talking in the spirit now. You look at the spirit realm and you, you can see that the world, the whole thing is based upon a lie. It's based upon self and, and doing for self. And it's, and it's all just, a, just one big conflagration of self, you know? And I had the thought yesterday, if you, if you took all the tanks and all the guns and all the knives and swords and, and all of the ammunitions and machinations of man away off the earth even right now God just removed every one of them people would pick up rocks and grab tree limbs and try to kill each other because that's the self nature the self nature is wanting to rule all the time you know it's wicked it's vile it's it's just a, a total degradation of what God meant for man hallelujah and what God means for man is that we be like him okay and the only way we can be like him is to have him come in hallelujah and the only way that he can come in is if we submit if we cry out if we say Lord save me see a person can only get saved when they repent of their sin and believe the gospel they have to take one little step toward the Lord and once they do that God sees it it's it's the prodigal coming up to the top of the hill see when you take one step toward the Lord in any area now I'm talking to believers and non-believers okay and you're a believer right now maybe you're you're going through some battles you're going through some trials you can't get the victory you want some victory in your life just take one step turn toward the Lord it'll be like the prodigal coming to the top of the hill and the father runs to meet his son. And the father will run to meet you. And to bless you with forgiveness and mercy. The Lord loves mankind. And he wants to see people come to his son. He knows that not all will come. The vast majority will not. But I still believe and Sharon believes. We know for a fact God's going to have a great harvest. And here at the end time, he's going to have a great harvest, a great harvest. He calls it the tent. And if you look at the population of the world in the first century, well, today it's astronomically more, isn't it? Seven billion people. So a tent would be 700 million. That's a pretty big harvest. Hallelujah. In another place in Zechariah 13, he talks about the third. So... The Lord will have his way. The Lord is the victor. Hallelujah. Not the devil. The other day I posted a, a status on Facebook and asking people to talk about this one verse here in 1 John 2 verse 20. And it says, But ye, John's talking to, to us believers. The Holy Ghost is speaking. He's reminding us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things wow that's just that verse blows me away and I was seeking the Lord and I wanted people to seek the Lord on this verse and, and write a message or make a video about this verse okay you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things sometimes I say things <laughs> later on I go why did I say that because God wants us to see some things. God wants us to, to, to understand some things here. Hallelujah. So when you're studying the scripture and you're seeking the Lord in the scripture, you, you have to remember you go before the verse you're looking at and after the verse you're looking at so that you can get the context, okay? Because the Holy Ghost wants to reveal to us. He wants to show us many, many things through and in His Word. Hallelujah. And before this verse... We'll start at verse 15. Well, we have to go back even further. Let me let me grab my trusty 
Bible here. Oh, yeah. Praise God. And you go to 1 John here. It's in the back of the Bible. Hallelujah. Fourth to the last book. Oh, praise God. And you, you will start it at just chapter 2. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. John said, If any man sin, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ is the righteous. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he keeps going through here, and I'm going to pick it up here. Um, John, he begins to talk about the commandment, the commandment of love. And he begins to, to uh, separate that and show in contrast to that is, is hatred. People hate other people. Okay? As Christians, we're not to hate anyone. Our enemies, we're to love them and bless them. Okay, People that are filled with the devil, working for the devil and calling it Christianity, we're to love that person. And we do. But the demons, we don't love them. No, 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 no. We, we, we crush them in the name of Jesus. We crush them by the word of God and the word of truth. Hallelujah. And prayer and fasting. We, we crush those demonic forces by the blood most precious of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. We'll start at verse 10. He that loveth his brother, this is 1 John 2, 10, abideth in the light. Oh, hallelujah. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you little children. Now we're getting into the meat of this chapter here and it's going to tie in with verse 20. Hallelujah. John is saying, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you. He didn't say your sins are going to be forgiven. He didn't say they might be forgiven. He said, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven forgiven for forgiven you for his name's sake hallelujah for his name's sake not for our sake are our sins forgiven but for his name's sake hallelujah see the Lord said in Isaiah 43 he said put me in remembrance come on he says he forgives us our sins for his own sake hallelujah hallelujah Malachi's uh, Micah 7 says in Micah 7 it says he subdues our iniquities hallelujah God does the work of transforming us into the image of his son we have an unction from the Holy One we know all things what do, what do we know what does that word know mean it means to perceive with certainty to understand clearly to have a clear and certain perception of truth fact or anything that actually exists to know a thing pre includes all includes all doubt of uncertainty of its existence we know what we see with our eyes or perceive by other senses we know that fire and water are different substances we know that truth and falsehood express ideas incompatible hallelujah with hallelujah incompatible truth and fault truth and false falseness falsehood express ideas incompatible with each other incompatible with each other it's like when you know that the holy scripture is holy it's it's inspired by god okay that's the truth see we know that as true believers we know it is hallelujah we know all things but you have an unction oh that word unction there that's a powerful word it's to smear okay it's to uh it's it's a smearing an ungent okay it's the special endowment it's a chrism it's a gift of the Holy Spirit anointing unction we have an unction and holiness of the Holy One of Israel the Holy Ghost hallelujah hallelujah and we know all things we perceive we know true from false hallelujah but people that don't know it I mean how it'd be like it'd be like a person working on a car okay a 1957 Buick or let's just say a 2000 model Buick Century okay and they're working on the Buick Century and and this is this is what people that don't believe the Bible and I'm gonna tie this in because it's important that you understand they don't believe the Bible is necessary okay and, and so the Buick alright is our life okay the, let's just just an analogy the Buick is our life and it's broken alright there's something broken on it alright 
and someone comes along and you can't figure out what's wrong with it. There's something going on with the electrical system. Something going on with the electrical. You can't figure it out. You don't know what it is that's wrong with it. Okay? And so you don't know what to do. And someone comes along and they say, here, here's a book, all right, that will show you what's wrong with the with the Buick. It'll show you how to test it. It'll show you how to troubleshoot what's what the problem is. And you look at them and say, and this is how this is how these people are that say they don't need the scripture, okay? They say, I don't need that. I'll just keep tinkering with it till I get it figured out. See? And that's what they're doing. But but they're false. You see how stupid that would be? For a true believer to say, I don't need the scripture, I don't need the Bible. That is just idiocy. It's idiocy. Okay? When you believe the Holy Scripture and you walk in the truth contained therein, hallelujah, because it's all absolute truth. The world, those in the world today, this whole world system, the world order that Jesus said, I do not pray for the world. I do not pray for this cosmos the way the world does things. See, that's all of the dark side. Jesus doesn't pray that. He doesn't pray for that. He came and changed all that. He brought in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. But we have an unction from the Holy One. And we know all things. And the word know, getting back to that. Hallelujah. We know that truth and falsehood express ideas incompatible with each other. Incompatible. See? Falsehood says, no, you don't need the scripture. The scripture says that it's wise to, to make us wise unto salvation. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Hallelujah. See? Who needs the reproof and correction? We all do at one time or another. Hallelujah. See? And the Holy Scripture is profitable for that. So the people that teach you don't need it, that's falsehood. That's just that simple. It's just falsehood. And they're incompatible with each other. We know that a circle is not a square. People that know. <laughs> Hallelujah. We do not. <laughs> Praise God. Now this is the Webster's definition, 1828 Webster's, of the word no. We know that a circle is not a square. We do not know the truth of reports, nor can we always know what to believe. Number two, the second definition, to be informed of, to be taught. It is not unusual for us to say we know things from information when we rely on the veracity of the informer. See? In other words, we know the truth of the information when we rely upon the veracity of the informer. The Holy Ghost is the informer. Hallelujah. And he gave it who to? He gave it to the apostles and the prophets. Hallelujah. And they recorded it for us. And this is the truth. And we know of the veracity of the informer. See? We can trust the apostle John that he was hearing from the Lord. We can trust the apostle Paul who was shipwrecked and beat. Okay? And stoned and robbed and persecuted by false brethren. Okay? for the sake of the name who went through so many trials and many people want to be like the Apostle Paul or better but they don't even suffer and they don't want to suffer okay Paul suffered greatly for the sake of the name we can trust Paul's writings we can trust that they're written by the Holy Ghost hallelujah see hallelujah and we can rely upon the veracity of the informer hallelujah number three to distinguish as to know one man from another we can distinguish. We can know one man from another. We can know a believer from another, from a false believer. Someone who professes. They're a professor with tenure. They, they profess they believe. But we can tell, okay, by the Holy Ghost. We can discern because, see, we know all things. We have to believe this. This is a verse that is in the Bible. It's, it's Holy Ghost inspired. But we, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To distinguish as to know one man from another. We know a fixed star from a planet by its twinkling. See, these are things we know. To recognize by recollection, remembrance, representation, or description. We do not always know a person after a long absence. We sometimes know a man by having seen his portrait or having heard him described. Now, see, this is true. What Webster gave this definition, okay? We do not always know a person after a long absence, and that's true. We found that to be true with a, with a dear friend of ours, because we we haven't communed with them in so long. It's like we forget 
where they are in the faith or where they were when we talked with them. So when we see something that perceived, we think they're one way, and then when we contact them, we find out, no, no, no. And then remembrance, the Holy Ghost brings remembrance back to us about the person. Okay, And that happened to me recently. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number five, to be no stranger to, to be familiar. Hallelujah. This man is well known to us. See, that, that, that's the thing. We know all things. See, you, you want to be, as a believer, as a Christian, you want to be familiar with the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to be familiar with Christ. You want to read His words. You want to read the words inspired by the Holy Ghost so that you can be familiar with the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, in Scripture, to have, to know, it means like to have sexual commerce with, okay? And that's to know a husband and wife knowing each other see that that word know right there we know all things hallelujah number seven to approve number the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous the Lord knoweth that word know there means the Lord approves hallelujah the way of the righteous hallelujah Psalm 1 to learn Proverbs 1 see this is a Webster's 1828 dictionary you won't find these in the new dictionaries because they don't believe in the Word of God anymore but Webster believed in it hallelujah Hallelujah. To learn, Proverbs 1. To acknowledge with due respect, 1 Thessalonians 5. He, he throws these scriptures in there because he's talking about the truth here. Okay? See? The word know. Do you know today? The Bible says we have an unction from the Holy One and we, and we know all things. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Scripture says. Praise God. Number 10, to choose, to favor, or take an interest in. Amos 3, to commit, to, to have. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Oh, wow. Number 12, to have full assurance of, to have satisfactory evidence of anything, though short of certainty. There's a lot of definition to the word no. Now, here's the word To have clear and certain perception, not to be doubtful, sometimes with a uh, doubtful of. That's to know, see. We have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. In 1 John 2, it says, John speaking to us, he says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. See, we know this. We have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. I write unto you fathers because ye have known that you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men, this is the Holy Ghost speaking hallelujah. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. Ye have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. I write unto you little children because ye have known the father I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you. Hallelujah. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Two times John says that. See? We've overcome the wicked one. How? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. By submitting to God we overcome the wicked one. The word know is, is a very powerful word. Do you know today that you are saved? Do you know today that you are filled with the Holy Ghost? Do you know today that the Holy Ghost was given to you by the Father through the Son for one purpose and one purpose only? Do you know what that purpose is? See, The purpose the Holy Ghost has given to us is to form Christ in us hallelujah see and the Holy Ghost doesn't take from us no he doesn't take from us to form Christ in us he takes from the Father he takes from the Son hallelujah and he and he forms Christ in us and in order to do that he has to get rid of us see? he transforms us we're transformed from glory to glory from faith to faith as we behold the Lord Jesus Christ as we gaze upon His beauty. We have an unction from the Holy One. We know all things. We know these things to be true. 
But many of us, we don't see these things evident in our lives. It's because our focus is wrong. The focus is ourself. The focus is our circumstance. And many times, the focus is the world. It's just the world. All that's going on in the world. All the rumors of wars. See? And famines and storms and all this stuff happening. And God's trying to get the attention of the people of the earth to look up to Him. But what are they doing? The New Agers and the whole world system, what are they doing? What do they worship? They worship the creature rather than the Creator. They worship the earth, Gaia, Mother Earth. They worship nature. See? They worship all these, uh, they worship the sun and the moon and the stars. They're still doing it. They worship Lucifer. They worship demons. They worship their self. And the Lord came down in the form of a man and, and he took on a body. He took on flesh. He is God in the flesh. And the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son. Hear ye Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's who we need to be listening to. And we can hear His voice very clear in our heart. Spoken by the Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord, I've told this before, He spoke a word to me in 2003, and the word was, there's a great struggle coming. That's what He said to me. But you will stand, for I am able to make you stand. Oh man, hallelujah. Well, naturally, I, would, I was like, okay, Lord, what is it? What's happening? Show me. You know, everybody has dreams and a lot of people are having dreams and visions and, and they're getting words from the Lord. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And you know what? When everything really hits the fan in this world, it's not going to look like anything you've ever had a vision about. It's not going to look like anything that you've ever thought about. Because it's going to be real and you're going to know. You're going to know. Then. Are you going to stand? Do you know the one? Do you know the Holy One? Do you have that unction from the Holy One? Do you know all things? See, it's by faith. It's by grace through faith. We know. See? We know. I know all things. Hallelujah. I know all things. I can say that because I know all things. Because the one who created all lives inside. Hallelujah. Can you say that today? If not, you need to get down on your knees before the Lord and say, Lord, let me know that too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is coming back. Now, I want to take you over to 1 John chapter 3 because this, I was reading yesterday, studying this and praying and seeking the Lord and I read this. Let me finish reading here in, in chapter 2 because it's important. John is talking to the children and to the fathers and he's saying, you've overcome the darkness. You've overcome the wicked one. For his name's sake, God has forgiven us all of our sins, hallelujah. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the precious blood of Jesus. He is the atonement. He is the propitiation, he says, verse 1, 2, and 3 of 1 John 2. Hallelujah. And then verse 15, he's, he's ad, admonishing us now. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is admonishing us now. Oh, I got holy bones. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Wow. That's powerful. What does that mean? What does that mean? What is the love of the Father? What is the love of the Father, saints? You think about that. Okay, think about that. Leave a comment on this video what the love of the Father is. Okay? Hallelujah. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Oh, praise God. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I wrote a note here. His will for us. His will is for us to abide in Him. See, Jesus said, abide in me. You'll bear much fruit. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now, John says, even now, right there in the first century, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. And that word time there is hour. It's the last hour in the first century. How far have we come since then? It's Oh, it's dark out there, isn't it? But we are the shining lights. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. That's what he said to us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. They went out from us. They went out from the truth because they're not of the truth. See? Hallelujah. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. That's powerful. And ye know all things. I have not written unto you, verse 21, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. See? Ye know the truth. Hallelujah. And that no lie is of the truth. And the truth is what? It's Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. See, we know this. He's the truth. He told Pilate, I came to testify and bear witness to the truth. Pilate's like, what is truth? Because in the, in the world of the Roman Empire, in the world of, of today, truth is whatever people make it. And Jesus comes in and says, no, no, I am the truth. See? And that just grinds man, his pride, oh, his arrogance, oh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. You know, everybody thinks, oh, I won't have any fun anymore. No, you, you are more peaceful. You are more joyful. You are, you are having so much wonderful peace and joy and love and happiness in the Lord. See, you don't have it in the world. All the world's peace, all their happiness, all their joy is dependent upon if the electric grid stays up. If all their bills are paid. If they can do what they want to do. See? I mean, I'll take you back to Russia, you know. Go to Russia in, in 1900. It was a pretty prosperous nation in 1900. You know, the Tsar was ruling, and, and boy, the Tsar was, he was well liked by many people and hated by other people, but people had their farms and they had everything, and then the Bolsheviks came in, took over, and they began to sack the whole land, taking everything they wanted and whatever they wanted, they took it. See? And the happiness was gone. I mean, the, the peace that the people enjoyed at that time was, was gone. Now they're under the thumb, see? And that's what's happening today. They're fixing to do it to the whole world this time. And where are you going to be? Are you a believer? If you're a believer, you'll be in Christ. Whether they take everything or not, you're still going to be in Christ. He's your happiness. He's your peace. He's your joy. He's your love. He's all the fruit of the Spirit. And if you're in Him, it's not going to matter on the outside, ultimately. And some of you, you can learn that today, but some of you will have to wait to learn it because you might not really believe what I'm saying, do you? But I'm telling you, I'm speaking from the Holy Ghost and, and the Lord says, learn it right now. Say, Lord, take it out of me, see? We hear the Bible says, come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon, okay? And we think in the physical, we're always looking in the natural. Come out of Babylon, okay? So go out of the church building or go out and do this, you know, or whatever. And what the Lord is saying, in your heart, you come out of Babylon. You say, Lord, take it out of my heart. Take Babylon out, the self-life, all the stuff for me. Take that out. And that's what the Lord wants to do with all of us. But we have, we know the truth, see. John I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. He's not writing to them to try to teach them truth. He says, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. Hallelujah. Oh, that's powerful. And that no lie is of the truth. When people lie to you and say that the Bible is not necessary, that's a lie. It's not of the truth. Oh, praise God. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Oh, man. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. Oh, hallelujah. If it, will, if it remains in you. Oh, praise God. 
company. Ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. See, we have that life now, saints. We don't have to wait for it. Oh, praise God. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over here to, to chapter 3 and verse 20. Chapter 2, verse 20. Chapter 3, verse 20. This really hit me yesterday. Because I, I, I've read 1 John I've, probably more than any book in the Bible. I love this book. And uh, it speaks to me. John says, uh, verse 18, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the, of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. You know, if we love indeed, not just in word only. See, we know we're in the truth. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. That's how I believe it. That just blows me away. I hope you can get it. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Verse 20, chapter 2, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. There's some powerful truth here. I'm just beginning to scratch the surface, I suppose, because... Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, verse 21, then have we confidence toward God. Do you have confidence toward God today? Can you come to the throne room boldly by the blood of the Lamb? Do you know your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake? Have you forsaken the world and the lust thereof? I'm going to leave you with this, and then I'm going to pray. Second Peter, chapter one. Hallelujah. Second Peter, chapter one. Hallelujah. Simon Peter is servant. He was a servant. Took the low place. And an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained. That have obtained. See, see we have obtained that saints. We're believers. We need to act like it. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Look at that. Through the knowledge. You want to find out God's thought? You want to know what God's thinking? You want to know that the Lord says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You want to know more about the Lord and the things of the Lord and all the hidden truths, the things that you know because the Lord is in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is in you. See, as believers, then then read the scripture and study and pray it. Believe it. And, and, and hold to it. And believe the promises contained therein. Verse 2 again. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. See, we have all power. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Oh, praise God. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Oh, hallelujah. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Oh, praise God. See, we are partakers of the divine nature by the understanding of the Lord, by the knowledge of the Lord. And we have nothing to fear from the evil one. And nothing to fear 
from men. We stand before God and fear Him alone. Heavenly Father, I praise You and thank You. I pray that You seal this word to the heart of the people, Lord, and I pray that You just open up our hearts to receive even more, Lord. Break every demonic force in Jesus' name. Amen.